Hi, my name is Alistair Ben, and you are watching and listening to Vision and Light. Today, I have a great pleasure in speaking to the incredible Julia Anna Gospodaru, and I apologize to her again if I pronounced her name wrong. Uh, Julia Anna is an incredible architectural photography primarily, but is moving more and more into landscape photography. And I first came across her work quite a few years ago when I actually bought her ebook, uh, which is uh, an inc a really insightful look at black and white photography, uh, architectural photography, and a concept called envisionography. Now, in this conversation, it goes on for well over an hour, so you might want to listen to it or watch it in parts or bookmark it or sit down with a cup of coffee and really absorb this because in this conversation, Julia, Anna and I dig really deep into the psychology of creativity, the, uh, the flow states and the meditative nature, the therapeutic benefits of, of uh, photography. And I think it's really important in this talk to move beyond just landscape landscapes and appreciate that creativity can be found in just about any genre uh, of the arts. It doesn't always have to be photography. These principles follow right through the creative process in any field. It's about getting out there and engaging with the world and being passionate about what we do and then perhaps thinking about it. And the beauty of photography is it's a reflective medium so we can see our thoughts. So enough chat from me for now. Please check out Julia Anna's work. Uh, we've just bought one of her prints, which are just incredible. Uh, so we are just delighted to be having that on our wall very shortly. Uh, this is the print that we've bought. And I would just urge you to check out Julia Anna's work, either her prints or her learning material. She's a real gift to the creative world. So that's enough chat for me. Let's get on with it. I'd like to have a warm welcome to Julia Anna. Nice to see you here, finally. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. It's a real pleasure to to talk to you and to to talk to you in in real time. I mean, because yes, well, I think we've we've been aware of each other for quite a few years now. Um, we were talking just before we came on air, and I very much became aware of your work through your ebook uh, that you brought out. When was that? About the 2014 or something? Yeah, I think it was 2014 when uh, it was released. Oops, it's six years already. Yes. I'm Time flies. <laughs> yeah, and, and well, the, the thing that really struck me about it at the time, and rather than asking you for your potted history of who you are as a, as a photographer, um, this whole concept of envisionography was born uh, at that time. So I'm, I'm desperate for, to hear all about it and, and for you to sort of elaborate on it. Yeah, I think that this was born actually quite some time before, but I probably wasn't aware of how to express that in words until sometime, I don't know, starting around 10 years ago when I started to do photography more seriously, um, to transit from the hobby photography to professional photography. And then, I mean, when you, when you set your mind on thinking about things and expressing them you decide that you have to express what you're thinking then when you concentrate on on this you can become aware of things that you were already feeling and thinking about photography about what you're doing but you haven't you hadn't yet put into words right so i think that that was that the moment when i started thinking about it in terms of putting it into words but what i feel as far as envisionography is that I'm trying to use photography as a way of expression um, that m makes me be able to communicate how I feel through those subjects that I shoot. So it's not so much what I do is not so much um, that doesn't emphasize emphasize so much the subject as what 
we feel when we use those subjects right. in the sense that we have an idea, we have a need for expression, and then we find some subjects and we, those su subjects are um, fit for the way we express ourselves. So that's how I see fine art photography. Of course, there are different ki kinds of photography. So you can express through photography in many ways. But my way of expression is I want to, to go beyond, to go to, to add something to what I see. Right. And I feel the need to express myself in a, cer a certain way. And because this is the mean that fits me best, at least at this moment, I was uh, dabbling in painting and I'm an architect. So I'm also, I have some other outlets of expression, but photography, I think for me is the most free way of expression. So that's why, uh, and I think for many people is, this is happening because it's from a technical point of view, it's, easier to do photography than to do something else. Um, everybody can have a camera. Um, everybody can learn how to use a camera. Everybody can learn how to use software. And if you realize, when you realize uh, what, how much power these um, tools have, then you feel the need to use them to express yourself, or this is what, what I feel. So that's why when I'm thinking about it in jungle, it, it's somehow going beyond what I see as being traditional photography, where you want to show an object, you want to um, present a scene or um, an idea, or um, I'm trying to put myself into it. So I think this is coming from the way I approach art. I mean, art was part of my life, not necessarily that I was um, actively creating. I'm not a sculptor, painter, or whatever, but I was always drawn to this. How we express ourselves in in a way that is not is not that very clear way that we have to express in in the day to day day life. So when you communicate normally, you have to be clear. While in art, you you can do anything. So you, there's, there's a freedom that you can have in art that I always wanted I, only, I, I will always need it and I, I think that this is something that can add a lot of value to our life and totally. that's what i'm trying to put into photography and that's why I'm, I'm talking about visionography it's putting your vision into your into your work um and making your vision as an artist even more important than probably the subject um right no, I said to you before we came on air that, that I don't enter into these things with a script or a list of questions. And, yeah. and obviously your answers to whatever I put to you are going to spark off all sorts of, and I've got about 40 different angles that I could come in at from. Uh, I could talk about this all day, I can tell you. <laughs> I, well, I, I think we might. <laughs> um, so the first thing that came into my mind and I want to come back to envisionography later because I think there's many different angles that we can look at from that. But the first thing that's clear is that your architectural work is something that's outstanding. I mean, you know, I think you've you've Thank put you. boundaries and you've created uh, a marriage of the technical and the visionary that's that's just. I'm always blown away when I look at them. It, it just, it, 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 I find them just so emotionally stimulating uh, because you use luminosity extraordinarily well, you know, with the way you dodge and burn. Do you think that landscape photography is less free in that regard than architectural photography? No, no, not at all. I think, actually, I like landscape. And even if you cannot see too much landscape, publicly posted by me, I have shot quite a bit of landscape and I, I have quite a few images. So um, I think I love landscape just as much, but I think I can express myself through architecture better. Probably it's, I think each artist can, um, has one way of expression that is going to be the best. Okay. But you are just like, any human being, you're going to have different facets of your personality and uh, your style. For me, architecture, also because probably because it's my profession and I understand it better, I think that understanding a subject is very 
it's fundamental for you to be able to use that in the best way for what you're creating because you're familiar when you're familiar with something you may you can be uh, more bold you can be you can go further you know what you're talking about you're, you're more confident so that's how i feel with uh with architecture and um it i was always shooting architecture not only in um as fine art photography but also for my needs in my profession or for documenting um mm. purposes for whenever i was traveling from as long for as long as i was i remember myself from the film days uh, already i was uh, shooting architecture because i was it, it was just so I, I need it you know it's it's you you know when you, when you need it on the other hand i also love landscape and lately especially i have started to shoot more landscape and Actually, I was planning now with uh, with all the situation with the um, uh, with the lockdown. I was just planning a, a, a trip, a landscape trip that I wanted to make. That probably now it's going to be postponed for. We'll see when. Uh, and more, I mean, a more uh, serious was right a trip that I wanted to shoot only landscape and travel and. Uh, so I want to do this more. Uh, even if I love architecture, I think landscape is is expressing a different side of my personality. Well, this but is curious. Architecture is probably the first thing that I would go to, because I love cities, I love shapes. I there are many things that relate me to to architecture. Something that's clear in your architectural work is it's very ordered. You know, there's a, there's a beautiful sense of symmetry that you you yeah. use you use repetition extraordinarily well, um, and isolation. And do you think that side of your personality? You know, it's almost I feel like I'm going to make a horrible assumption here by sort of there's there's a bit of you that might be quite ordered and neat and tidy and sort of likes order and everything oh, that's, that's right a very place. Good question. That's a fantastic question because I have to think about it. Uh, I am ordered, but I am ordered because I am very, my personality is very strong and tumultuous, <laughs> if you think about it. So for me to be able to function, I have to put some order in it. So there's always a struggle between uh, anarchy and order in me. It's going to be always going to be this, the rebel and uh, the person who, who wants to do things as, <laughs> as she should. And I mean, we live in a society, so we have to put some order in our lives if we want to function. Sure. But also I, I have this coming from uh, inside me that I, I want to express different things. So this is a very interesting thing. And I think that um, you can see this in, in my photography in a way, because I like to work with contrast. I like to work with uh, sometimes extreme light, but at the same time, I want things to be to be studied and to to get to that to that um, answer. So I, I make questions to myself, and the process of going getting to the answer can be very agitated and tumultuous. But then the answer has to be clear somehow. I'm not sure if this makes sense, but um, I'm, I'm going to I do think a little more. But the creative yes. process. Many people, I think, are functioning like this in the creative process. We have to go through a struggle. And then put things in order, and so others can understand them. Because otherwise, it would be difficult to communicate. I think. So, do you think, in some ways, then landscape photography is the antithesis of that? Is that you get to go out into slightly more chaotic landscapes and find different, more, you know, it, maybe that's an opportunity for your more agitated side to be to be released. Yeah, I can, I can say that, I think landscape is you get to see this majestic earth that we live on and that we don't see normally, especially if you live in a city like I am, and I've always lived in a city. So I always have this hunger for, for going out, for seeing these things that we don't see. And you understand, then you understand the force of nature and the, the wonderful things that it can do. And at the same time, you are able, being there, standing there, to experience that. So I think that's that's a miracle for me. And at the same time, it gives you um, strength and energy, but it also gives you peace. It's is that combination, is that duality, is that in and yang, that that you can find with uh, with landscape that I 
you, sometimes you you're you're afraid if you're in front of a scene i don't know it's uh, um the, the weather is uh, there's a thunderstorm or something you're you're afraid but you're also at peace and you're 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 living in that moment so it's that's what i i chase in life to be able to live in in the moment because then it's when you're happy as when you when you are able to experience exactly what you're doing and that's what i'm trying to do in my photography then to put this thing to translate it into into my photography so i think that this is a fantastic outlet to um to study life to experience life to be a photographer Right. And and I think what we found very quickly during our initial conversations was how much we're on the same page in, in that regard. That, you know, for us, whether it's landscapes or cities or portraiture or any mm -hmm. form of photography, it's that using the subject to help uh, root around in our subconscious and unconscious yeah. and, and sort of it's almost like a dream state almost. It's like rationalizing a the... trance state. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes I feel like this, really. <laughs> well, that's a good way to be. And, you know, obviously we're living in difficult times and we're having to deal with a lot of challenging issues. How much how much of your... Because, I mean, the thing with your, lands, with your uh, architectural photography, mm -hmm. as I've mentioned before, is there's so much beautiful order in it. There's a tranquility to it. I, I've, I've never looked at any of your architectural images and felt tense or um, uncomfortable. The, the, there's always a very harmonious, uh, it's almost like womb-like, if, yeah. if, if I was going to use that, that metaphor. Um, is, is, and you've talked about using your photography as a means to address finding answers mm -hmm. uh, what sort of questions are you trying to find the answers to <laughs> oh the you know the big questions of humanity why we are here why where are we going <laughs> all these kind of things um i think that i mean there are big questions and there are small questions you you i mean you combine both of them but i feel that through uh, through photography i have the, the that time to Quiet, to become quiet and mindful of what's happening. And I can, it's, you don't need to do anything else. So you only need when you're, you're out shooting or when you're processing your images, you are able to experience that moment as it is. So then when the mind quiets down, I think you're able to um, access different other states of, of uh, consciousness. Um, I don't know if this is scientifically um, studied, but in some uh, degree it is. I think but it is. that's what I'm, I feel, that, that I can get in contact with a, a, a higher level of my consciousness that, that can understand the answers even without, understand the uh, answer to the questions that I have, even without necessarily putting it into words. It becomes, when you have a question and you don't have the answer, you're tensed. Okay, or whatever question that is, especially existentialist questions. <laughs> um, you don't necessarily need to, uh, to answer in, to that question in words. So it's a feeling, it's a state of mind that I think I'm able to uh, access through photography. It's like, I always think about this when uh, Jackson Pollock, the, the um, abstract expressionist painter, when he was painting, see, he had a very specific way of painting. He was uh, yes. um, spreading the, the canvas on the floor and he was just uh, spilling the paint. And he was saying that he does this in a subconscious way. He le lets his, his subconscious, subconscious do, the, uh, do the job. So he tries to be in contact with that uh, part of ourselves that can do more than what we are able to express. And I think that that's where, 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 I'm, uh, where I'm standing. And, and also, I'm I'm a um, an advocate of um, um, tradition, but not in the sense of tradition taken a tradition in art. So all, all this knowledge, all, all the uh, the things that have been created in art um, along the centuries, um, getting in touch with that is with that knowledge, with that experience, I think can enrich us as, as people. And I think that 
through my photography, somehow I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to go on the same path, even if photography in terms of art is a more non-conventional way because it's very young. I mean, photography is right. here for how long? It's We don't have 200 years. No. <laughs> While painting is here from the caves. I mean, yes. people were painting in the caves. <laughs> so it's that's why I think we have... Uh, are, are still struggling a little bit with accepting photography as an art. Uh, I mean, not we, but some yes. other people with with uh, seeing it like this. Art galleries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that I'm trying to get there somehow. And uh, that's what I, I was trying to do. I'm trying to do with my architecture work, but then you, you don't have the freedom. So when you design something, you have to obey to the rules, you have to obey to um, budgets and everything. That's why foreign photography is such a, um, get away from from everything, and I can do everything I want, so <laughs> I'm free. Yeah, and and I think running a business is very different different from just being in yeah. innately creative. I think when we're free and can do exactly what we want, sometimes it might not be very commercial. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, with the business part, and that's um, you need to do it. I mean, at some point, you it's nice to do whatever you like but you have to make a living so unless you have the funds to not need to work for a living you will have to find a way to to do that and uh, i don't know i hope that what i do as a business is offering other people the opportunity to experience what i experience because i am happy having this experience in experience in photography and that's why i'm teaching that's why i'm uh, I mean, it, it didn't even start like this. I didn't even have the intention to make a business out of photography. Uh, it was just that when I started sharing things uh, publicly, people came to me and asked me, do you want to teach me? Do I, can I do a mentoring with you or work, do, do workshops? I, I wasn't thinking about this, but little by little, I understood that I like this way. I like this this model of, of um, making a living out of what I like. And what more can you do than uh, doing for a living what you love? I mean, even if there are going to be parts that are going to be difficult, that are going to be annoying, um, it, you, you can do that because you love the, the, the results. So um, yeah, I, I can't complain. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm living the dream, I can say, even if it's, it's not easy, I, I won't say that it's easy. And but I can do all these things because I, I like uh, the, the the end goal, why, why I'm doing it for. Now, yet again, you've managed to answer one question and open the door to about 17 others. <laughs> uh, you're, you're creating a big challenge for me here, which is to try and decide exactly which one to pursue first. Right. Um, <laughs> Something you said. I'm happy uh, to answer to all of them <laughs> if well, we have I, the time. I, I, I should be keeping notes, but I'm going to rely on my uh, my my filing system to not let me down here. Um, right, there's a couple of things. What I'll do is I'll try and summarize some of that stuff together. You mentioned mindfulness, of course, mm -hmm. which is um, has become something of a, a kind of uh, popular culture thing yeah. now it became mm -hmm. the last sort of five or six years it's become quite a big thing um, yeah, and I yeah. think something that's kind of struck me a little bit with the envision the envisionography language is that you've created language to to explain something without using traditional zen like language uh, so that there seems to be a kind of you've because I think if you use traditional language, it, it, it becomes labeled and it becomes it's, kind yeah, of... Yeah, it may become a, a cliche, you know, and you don't pay attention to it, probably. Yeah. yeah. So there was that concept. So mindfulness, I mean, I'd love to talk about the act of mindfulness as a, you know, landscape photography and architect, any photography mm -hmm. as a mindfulness practice. But secondly, you said about um, being in an elevated consciousness mm -hmm. and there was where you felt your creativity lied or lay. Um, and that just struck me as a very interesting concept that that when we're rooted on the ground with our feet uh, sort of shackled down by convention and exactly. and norm normality, uh, creativity, I think, can be very, very hard to find. And, and that, I'm curious if you think that this sort of elevated almost 
I'm not going to say an out of body experience, but but some sort trans of state. That's why I call it <laughs> trans state. Yeah, a trans, a trans state. state. <laughs> but that again is a label. That's I mean, but, yeah. but that actually that's the word I think that you can use. Maybe it, the word is a little bit too strong, and some people are going to object to this. But I think that the state of trance is when, when you are in the zone in a, in a, in a more um, colloquial way of saying it. So there, there are moments and I find them through photography where it seems like everything is right. Everything in that moment, I don't want to change anything. And I think those are the moments of, of, of higher, um, of, of, of reaching your higher conscience and reaching your full potential of what you can be as a human being. And it's, it's not, I mean, you cannot pinpoint it, you cannot say that it's this or that, but I think that it informs everything you do if you are able to get there at least once in a while. And I'm able to get there when I'm out shooting, I'm in a, in a location that I really enjoy that I, and it's not, it's not happening every day, but it, there are going to be moments that I'm going to feel that. And I'm also feeling it when I'm working on my images, when I'm able to take what I, what I photographed and put even more of, who I am into it and, and express myself. And you, you get there a, 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 a contact with, with who you are that I think is more, more essential. And even if you cannot explain it in a, in a rational way very easily, um, it exists. And I mean, if you, if you, if you feel it, you, you know it's, it's real. And right. I think that there are many people who are feeling it and some people don't recognize it. That's why it's important for you to be aware as an artist that these are the, the this is the way how that your creativity is manifesting and know how to to live those moments um fully and uh, and know right. what you're searching yeah. for yeah I, I call that state optimal living Exactly. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I, I kind of look at images as, as little snapshots where I can identify and say, yes, I was really alive at that moment. Exactly. You know, where you're fully engaged and, and you're listening to the environment and it's resonating with you and you're elevating it, uh, like you said. Now, what I'd like to go on to next is your... And looking at your, your architectural work particularly, because I think your architectural work is so finely uh, presented. I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan. I'm going to have to buy some, to be honest. I, I, <laughs> I have to, I've been looking at too much of it over the last few days and I just have to, <laughs> I'm going to have to buy one. Um, but there, there seems to be, do you think that there's a big barrier for people between the doing of the thing so whether it's in the field and understanding the technicalities of long exposures for example yeah. or depth of field or those types of things uh, and getting a good exposure and then in front of the computer uh, you know the level of masking that you do mm -hmm. and the selections that you do and the way that you're dodging and burning super specifically that that for you to do that in a in a in an elevated trance state requires an awful lot of hardwired technical proficiency. Um, I think, yeah, sorry. Um, no, I, I, I realized I, that my I question was... was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, and probably this comes from the way I'm thinking, I'm thinking both technically and, and artistically at the same time. And I think that this helps me um, be, I mean, accept the fact that you have to be technically sound to do the, your best work. So, I mean, it's very easy. If you think about it, you want to express something, you have to have the tool to express it. And it's your choice how far you want to go into learning the craft and becoming a skilled photographer. I mean, technician photographer, taking the photo as you should to learn all the techniques and uh, a skilled uh, Photoshop uh, ed editor uh, or retoucher, or however you want to say it. Um, you need to, when you decide you want to do this at the highest level, to please yourself, I mean, to please yourself, to please the others, it doesn't even matter why, why you're doing it. Um, you have to understand that you have to have a level of, of, um, of skills. So you cannot just come and expect everything to be easy because it's not. I can tell you the first time I opened Photoshop, it was in, I think, 2003 
it was one of the first photoshops and um I said, no, <laughs> not working with this. This is too difficult. I just left it for a few years. So if I was from that moment, this, I had decided that I'm going to do the job, I'm going to do the work and learn it. I think I would have been able to do many more things than I, what I could do at that moment. But then anyway, it was, um, you, you didn't even um, work with digital. I mean, it was for different other things. I, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but anyway, it was um, a long time ago. <laughs> so what I see, and I see many times with, with my students, because many people come to me that are starting out or are in the process of learning, is that they think that you don't need to do anything that is going to be just pushing a button and that's it. And it's not like this. It's not, you need a learning curve. So you have, to, you have to accept that you need a learning curve because then it becomes easier. You know that you are not supposed to know everything and that there are no magic um, recites for um, I'm just pushing the manual, uh, the, the, the auto button in the camera and everything uh, becomes as I have in mind or I just apply a preset in Photoshop and, uh, and it's uh, <clears throat> what I had in mind. So it, you need to prepare yourself, but at the same time, after you get to a level that doesn't it need to be very high, you start seeing results in your work and you start being able to do what you want. And that is so satisfying. And then it becomes a second nature. I mean, for me, I, I have, um, like everybody, I have um, challenges sometimes and I would have to find workarounds because some images are difficult uh, shooting or, or processing, but it, most of what I'm doing becomes a second nature. So you do it, you just do it, you know? What, what they say, you have to know your camera uh, to, to um, um, function to uh, activate your camera and to uh, do the functions with your eyes closed, like a professional shooter, professional gun shooter. You know <laughs> that's how they they learn, and yeah. this is what you need to do. So you have to know to know your tools because that's going to give you so much more freedom. And actually, it's not even difficult, and especially if you like it. How can this be difficult if you like it? <laughs> mm. So that's why giving yourself the the, the permission to accept that there's going to be a learning curve in photography just like in everything else. And that's why we are here, the people who are um, doing, I mean, in the um, education um, field of photography to share our knowledge. And there are so many people who are doing so. You have, you have where to find the, the knowledge. It's, it's, it exists over there. So um, the best thing you can do when you're starting and you want to do um, photography more seriously is to start learning from the basics and go up because you're going to have much more freedom. That's, that's what I think. And that's my experience because I wasn't born a final photographer. I no. had to learn all these things like everybody else. That's right. That's right. It's, uh, there's very few people are born geniuses. Uh, very, very few. It's, um, and I think we're all in the same boat. I mean, we're all self, most of yes. us, I think, are just self-taught and we've, we've just kind of worked it out as we go along. And, and we, we, we stand on the shoulders of giants. I mean, I, I bought your book in 2014 and learned a whole bunch of stuff back then uh, that, that, that are still important to me today. Uh, you know, so I think it's, it's, uh, it's lovely to be able to finally talk to you about this. Yeah, we learn from each other and in, in from interacting with other people that you admire, that uh, have something to say. You elevate your your knowledge and you elevate the way you see you see things and you find different um, different ways of expression. You combine these things with what you have. So this is progress for me, and it's not in only in photography. Educating yourself is the way to progress in, in anything and for the humanity to progress. That's why sharing knowledge is for me so important. How, how do you feel your work is developing? I mean, you know, we're, we've sort of talked a lot about that sort of 2014, 2015 mm -hmm. time. Um, and I think the, the images that really sprang to mind then were, were the bridge in Athens with the strength mm -hmm. like a heart. Yeah. Um, which, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, and, you know, those images to me at the time really struck a chord with me. There was just a beautiful simplicity to them and looking at the familiar and changing it into something else. Now, I'm kind of seeing an evolution in your work where the, the processing seems to be... 
there's a very graphical quality to it now. You know, the, the, there's almost a charcoal-like nature to the way you're presenting your contrast. And how much, how much do you use luminosity and contrast to express the, the root emotion of what it is that you're trying to convey? Yeah, actually, I think that working with light is, uh, especially for black and white photography, where you, you only have light, you don't have color, so you can only, you have on, one, one element that you can express yourself, and it's very important, and that's why I always, I try to use light as a way of, as a language, as what, what I would want to say in words, I have to put it in light, so if I want to say this image is about that idea, and this is the element that I want to emphasize, then my light is going to support that idea. So I'm going to, you're going to find the, the most amount of light on that element that the image is about. And I'm trying to create this hierarchy in, in working with light that will give the, the, um, a certain amount of importance to different elements in the image with, um, a combination that is going to show you what is the most important, what is the next most important, and gradually going towards um, the, the elements that are just supporting. So I think that this is how we can communicate by working light and by working intensity, luminosity, uh, we can communicate this message uh, that what is this image about? Because when you shoot, most of the times you're going to have, sometimes you're going to have um, very good light conditions, but most of the times everything is going to be lit in the same way, in the, at the same level. I mean, it's the light that you have at, this, uh, at the moment. However, when you go to uh, editing the image, because you have all these tools, you can start balancing that light. So you can start emphasizing by, by working with light, emphasizing certain elements and decreasing the importance of others. So I think that this is how we can we can communicate. And um, now, I in, back in 2014 and um, previous years, I was working more with abstract subjects. Mm -hmm. um, now, lately, I find, it's not that I'm shooting them, but my final images are somehow more complex uh, because mm -hmm. I find interesting that work with with a more complex image how you create that hierarchy of light how you you are able to it's like staging a play you know and you have all the actors and all the setup and you try to see who's going to say something at what moment and you have light too i mean composition also but the composition alone is going to not it's going to only take you as far then if you add light and if the, the light is following the composition, then your image can become very strong and you're able to uh, to say this actor is the most important, this is, um, this is the main actor, this is... A, uh, so it's, it's very interesting how you communicate with, with the image. And I think that this is one of the things I like most about editing when you, you start working with light is that it, it's a dialogue with the image. So you try to do something, the image is going to either accept or kick back and <laughs> you're going to <laughs> to try to convince the image to, coll to com uh, collaborate <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't and then you start thinking maybe I'm the one who's making a mistake. So it's a very interesting thing to do this with, uh, with the image. It's, uh, and having an idea on, when you're shooting, I think that <clears throat> can help you know where you're going and then you can see in practice how it works. So it's it's like a game, you know. It's like um, I mean, I, I see it like like a game sometimes. It's I, I, the th the thing. I've, I mean, I've, I've, I get to speak to some fascinating <clears throat> people on this on this show. I mean, I've, I've spoken to some really really amazing guests so far, and there's some crackers. Yeah, you have some, you had some very interesting people in your show. So yeah, and congratulations for that. <laughs> but it, it's it's fascinating for me because partly I I think we always worried somehow that we're living in some kind of creative vacuum, you know, that we're feeling things that other people aren't feeling or we're thinking things that other people aren't feeling. And the thing I enjoy most about this is when someone says something that I've got had in my head or have said, uh, you know, running a workshop. And I agree totally with the whole putting on a performance, a stage and who, the hierarchy. I totally get that. Do you have a different relationship with images that have 
kind of recognizable iconic buildings in them versus more anonymous because obviously you know i'm looking at your, your website as, mm-hmm. I'm, as we're speaking and obviously the, the tour de fer uh, is a very different building from some anonymous skyscraper in yeah. a back street of london for example yeah that can be tricky um the fact that a subject is well known can help you but also can be challenging because mm-hmm. When something is well known, you you have to say something about it that people don't know, but also that people know. So you have to be to strike a balance. So you're you're talking about something that people will mostly know many things, but you have to offer something new for for your work to be um, taken into consideration. And I think that I find a challenge um, many times, and that's what draws me many times to working with famous um, subjects. Uh, except for the fact that I want to experience those subjects. I want to go there and see them. And and it's not only about photography. For me, it's a lot about, that's why I, I um, like to travel and photograph because it's about experiencing that culture, experience the history. I love reading about uh, the subjects I'm shooting because that gives me ideas. And when I go there and I have that face-to-face experience, uh, things start happening, you know, and I get different feelings and I may go with, with a certain idea and then I may change the idea because it, that, that interaction is giving me something else. So I, I find this fascinating and I, I find fascinating the fact that you're trying to, to find um, an element, something, a, a, an interaction from uh, between you and that subject that it is yours you know it's it's personal and how do you put that into your photography because when you shoot something that is well known there are going to be some angles that are the best from the point of view of composition of aesthetically and everything and sometimes you're going to shoot those angles sometimes you're going to find something else but even if it's let's say the same angle how can you bring something to that angle that is well known to make another point to to offer something new so people can have this sparkle of oh i I didn't think about that that's interesting and then you start a a chain of of reaction a chain of of, uh, um, thought a thought process in in the viewer that is going to enrich his life because that that's the point and my life also because that's what i'm doing so i think that while i like to shoot any kind of interesting um structure I think that there is a challenge that I want to take and I accept um, by shooting well-known um, objects and trying to, to find that thing that is mine and that says something that is meaningful for me and hopefully for the others. Right. Um, I read on your website, and I'm going to have to dig in here and find it, because I seem to remember you have written about finding enlightenment through photography. Yeah, actually, I have a series that is called Enlightenment. You do. And, yeah. And, and um, now, obviously, the word enlightenment comes with some pretty heavy connotations. Um, but I'm a big fan of that concept of mm-hmm. enlightenment. Now, do you consider enlightenment to be synonymous with creativity or is it more of a mindfulness state of being in the moment and accepting everything as it is i think that uh, creativity can be an outlet to get there because it gives you uh, clarity i mean maybe the creative process can be um also part struggle because you're trying to find something but it gives you clarity because you get to a point when you know why you're doing it what you're doing so i think that it's for me uh, at least and i think for everybody is important to find that moment where we are we are in our best state of mind and of everything and that's what enlightenment means for me to be to get to that point where everything is fine the way it is so you don't need to improve uh, anything 
And I think that that's the moment when you understand and accept life with everything that life throws at you, good and bad. And I think that creativity is a, is a way of, of um, um, dealing with that, a way of, of, uh, um, of experiencing what you have in, in, uh, in a more personal way. So that's why I think photography can, and it come, I, when coming back to that, what I said before, it gives you a um, quietness of the mind when you are able to, I think in my case, to accept and understand that your experience is, is who you are, no matter what they are. I mean, your, uh, the, the good things you've done, the mistakes you've made, the good people, bad people in your life, uh, good experiences, bad experiences, at the end of the day, this is who you are. So all these experiences make who you are. And I think that photography is helping me do that and understand um, how, how I can use everything I have to, um, to make me be happy because that, that's what we want at the end of the day. Um, the thing is that normally we search for happiness in things that are external. This is the way society teaches us. You have to have a good job, you have to have a good uh, wife or husband, you have to have, and all this is okay. But the point is, if you don't have a, a, um, a balance, an internal balance, if you don't find it, whatever you have from outside is not going to be able to satisfy you. Correct. But when you get to that point that you, you don't struggle anymore, and I'm not saying that you have to sit back and wait and don't do anything, it's very different from that. But Whatever you experience, you take it with open, open heart and you see what you're going to do with it because every experience is going to give you something. So I think life is about experience for me. It's that, that, that's what I, uh, and when you see it like this, when you don't uh, uh, search for, the, for perfection, but you search for experience, then I think that you're able to experience, to, to uh, enjoy everything that you're um, experiencing much better. And somehow photography is is helping me do this because it gives me that it's like you know like meditation people who meditate they try to quiet their mind so when i do photography because i'm focused on photography either i'm out shooting or i'm working on my images i concentrate on that and everything else disappears right. so then you, you have a clarity of the mind that i find uh, very beneficial in photography and that's what when i talk about enlightenment that's pretty much what i what i mean through photography that's interesting because my i i, I think about enlightenment a lot and i think about creativity a lot and yeah. um one of the, the the parallels i always see between enlightenment and creativity is that the realization uh, that you're enlightened is the same as the one that you realize when you're creative is that you've already you've always had it and you, you you've stopped looking yeah. externally for exactly. it um, it's there. Yeah. So you just yeah, need to find it. that's right. So I think this creative process, and I think a, a lot of people strive to find their creativity. And I'm, this is, um, I'm a little aware of the time, and I hope you don't mind if this just wanders on for a little bit longer. Oh, it's okay. No, no problem. I'm enjoying it very much. <laughs> okay. As long as you're I always it. like these kind of conversations. And I think that when you go beyond photography, I mean, this is, the, it, it's a pretext for us to experience something new so yeah okay right as, as long as you're happy i'm happy um so the this this whole key component is really that how much of your creativity because you know there's this impression with some of your work you know and it may be completely wrong that there has to be so much of sort of visualization required and i'm very interested to hear from you in terms of finding the balance between visualization and the the execution of visualization versus an openness to somehow allow your your innate subconscious to help drive you in areas that perhaps you wouldn't have gone to consciously what i think is that um what we choose to photograph is actually coming from i mean we are we think we are choosing it but i think it it's that i mean we are choosing it but in the sense that it comes from much 
much deeper. So you are going to shoot a certain kind of um, photography because you are a certain person. And I think I believe in this. There's, there's always a reason for what you're doing, for the way you, you manifest yourself. Except if you, I don't know, you want to, um, I mean, if you have an assignment and you have to shoot a certain object, but now we are talking about expression in terms of artistic really expression, well. when you're free to, um, to do whatever you want. So I think that that's how you, many times I, I'm starting, that I have an idea and I feel the need to express that idea. And then I'm starting to search for what subject can work for this. Um, how, how could I express this idea in, in, uh, in a photograph or in a series of photographs? Because I believe when you work in, in series of photographs, we ha have even more space to express an idea more uh, eloquently. So sometimes I'm searching for an idea, then I'm searching for the subject, and then I'm trying to match the two of them and see what it what it gets or i have an idea and i'm shooting outside and i find randomly a subject that works and i see it because when you have an intention uh, when you we are thinking about something you have something on the in the back of your mind you're going to see things right it's they're going to just jump at you and you're going to say oops this is exactly what i need this is perfect so you're going to have an idea uh, know that this object or this scene is going to be able to express that idea and then you can take it further in, in, in uh, editing and in editing you may have the surprise to see that uh, in terms of light that actually doesn't work and you have to change things so it, it it's always you, you're never sure how how things are going to look in the end but i think that having an idea and knowing how to work with light and shadow or with color with if you're uh, working with color is going to uh, be, give you the freedom to to get even further and 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 be selective of um, about what you're shooting and be able to narrow down because we have it's over we have an over um, offer of of uh, subjects so we can get anywhere it's so easy to go anywhere now. It's not yeah. like it was 50, 100 years ago that right. you needed uh, two, two months to go to New York, for instance. You, yeah. you go there and you can decide it now and go in a few days. So you have all this multitude of, of uh, possibilities. So it's very difficult to cover everything. And in the, in the beginning, you want, oh, I want to shoot everything. So you're hungry, you want to do it. But then when you have a, an idea, when you have vision, then the, the subjects ca come to you. So you're going to be able to pick some subjects that you, you want to work with and create um, that final image. So yeah, sometimes it's about visu visualization and vision from the beginning, and sometimes it just jumps at you, at you because you have an idea and then you come with, a, with the idea of, of a series, a body of work, oh, I'm going to do, to work about, uh, to do a series about this because it's like a Eureka moment sometimes. Right. So I like that you can have many ways of, of approaching. It's, uh, it's not set in stone how you're going to do it. Good, good. Because one of the things I'm really keen to try and do is break down the concept of this is the path. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and because I think a lot of t historical teaching and a lot of contemporary teaching, sadly, still focuses on do it this way. Mm -hmm. And this is what you should be shooting and this is how you should be presenting it. And I, I think it's a very blinkered approach. It, it feels to me very restrictive. Um, so, because just to sort of summarize what you what you said there, there was a feeling that your aesthetic, so you know your specific aesthetic, is on a spectrum, you know, and you have different facets of your personality. Mm -hmm. and you have your organized days, and you have your your anarchic days, and you have your uh, uplifted spiritual days, and you have your more melancholy. Uh, under the the thumb of contemporary society days and it's almost as if you're using your subjects to allow you to process and articulate all of these different facets and yeah. that seems to me to be an extraordinary source of creativity should we allow ourselves to surrender to it yeah i think that if we see ourselves as a source of source of inspiration then we pretty much don't need anything else. So the, right. the point is not, not search for it outside. I mean, everything is going to influence you and you need all, all everything you see um, to express yourself. But what you can feel inside 
of yourself, if you allow yourself to express yourself, it's going to be, you're always going to find a subject you want to talk about, um, a, a thing that is preoccupying you, um, the thing that you like or dislike, or um, the, what is outside is only going to be triggers for what you already have inside you. And I think that being aware of this can give you, it's, it's a very powerful tool for artists because we as artists are working with, it's something that is very immaterial. So you, you cannot, there's no, there are no rules. You cannot say this is good because, this is good because. It's very difficult to say why something is good. And you have to have this confidence as an artist that you are worth expressing that thing. And y your, your opinion matters and you can express it and you don't need to ex expect to, uh, to um, wait for anybody telling you this is good or this is not good. And then the process of learning is on one side, learning the technical part that uh, has to be learned. You don't have it in, inside you. And the other is learning how you can use your power as an artist and become a confident artist so you can create something that really you, you believe in. And I think we, when you do this, also the others outside are going to accept it because right. you are going to say something that is going to be meaningful when you, it comes from inside you. Because everybody, a, any human being is worth saying something. It, they, we have the, the right and we have the, the innate right to, to express ourselves. So it's right. just how to find that way to express it so other people understand it. And so you understand because uh, you are the, um, the first who has to understand. Um, that's why you're doing it. And I think that's right. I think the fact that we're all the same species makes makes the articulation process quite straightforward is because we're all speaking essentially the same aesthetic language. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're totally right that if, if we have the confidence to, to express ourselves very specifically, even if it's a little bit off the rail somewhere. Um, now, one final question, and I, I, you know, I, I could just quite happily sit here for another hour, but we'll, we'll make this the last one. You can um, make a, a sequel. <laughs> I'll, I'll be a good one. <laughs> um, what, what would you say, through your experience of working with students, is, are the common barriers to people finding that confidence in expression? I think is the way society sees artists. It's not in the people themselves, in, it's in what they think they should be. Um, it's one is this impression that you have to be perfect from the beginning. You have to be born, um, I don't know, knowing everything. And that you, it's very difficult for society doesn't allow you a, a learning path. You have to be like, you know, you, you finish university and then you go find a job and they say, you have to have experience, but I don't have, have to, you know, is this who, what was first the, the uh, hen or the egg? Yeah. And this is because our society is so, the speed of living is so um, high. It's, it's such a quick, fast paced society that, we almost don't allow ourselves the, the time to learn and to get to a point. So people are, have always afraid, the, the, they are afraid that they should know more than they do. And that paralyzes you because you, you think, oh, somebody else knows so much more. How am I going to know? How am I going to learn this? But the point is that when you start, you understand that the, I mean, everything is done step by step. If you make a step, then you can go to the next one and then you can go into the next one. You cannot jump. 10 steps because you're going to miss what's in between. Right. So that's why I'm, I'm always trying to give this confidence to my student that it's okay, no matter how you start, if you feel that need, if you are there in, in that position that you want to do photography, that you want to express yourself, that you want to learn. So if I get in contact with people, it's because they come to me and want to learn. So if you are here and want to learn, it means that you have the, the tools, you already have the tools. And you just need to give yourself uh, the, the time and the, um, to uh, allow yourself to get there and not almost already be there. So I think that's, that's why the, 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 the need to be perfect immediately. That's what is, is the most, um, the thing that I, I've seen. Uh, or uh, letting it, um, um, not, not uh, pursuing it if 
they don't see immediately results. Right. I've, but, got, I've got a yeah. rack of five guitars behind me and it was exactly the same thing with that, is that you, you go into a guitar store and you buy a guitar and you expect to be able to walk out and play like... Yeah, I've remember. done that too. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's that... I think there's an immediacy to photography that implies that it's simple um, and that you just have to go and point your camera at something and all of a sudden it's going to turn out exactly how it is in your mind's eye. So I think I think you're dead right. I think you've highlighted an extremely important one. I'd like to add that I think external validation is a is a very problematic thing these days as well. Is that yeah. you know, societies were very judgmental as a as a group of people, and I think yeah, it's a it's a very difficult marketplace to kind of walk into these days without putting in a lot of time. Um, well, mm -hmm. I would like to yeah. say that I think you've managed to find a niche for yourself that you absolutely own <laughs> it, i think that's the, the only way you can actually work in, as an artist if you try to please everyone and if you're unhappy if you don't you don't understand that people are different i mean it's okay if somebody don't doesn't like your photographs i mean totally my mother tells me why i don't have people in photographs why i don't shoot color photography <laughs> I mean, she likes something else, okay? It's not that she doesn't like my work. I mean, if my mother didn't like my work, <laughs> at least out of uh, respect. But uh, the, the thing is that you cannot expect, people have different uh, personalities, they're different, they're different in interests. So um, it's, it's normal for, uh, if not everybody likes your work. So you have to understand that you are talking with, it's like talking with your friends. You have to find a, a circle of people that you can communicate with. And it's not going to be everyone because not everybody can be your friend if you think right. about real life. So if you find those people, if they are, I don't know, 100, 1,000 or 10,000 or I don't know, depending. And anyway, you start small. Everybody starts with, I mean, you go on Instagram, you have one follower. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you start. And you cannot expect, unless you're very lucky to go from one follower to one uh, million followers. Yeah. So it's, it's also about um, understanding that Actually, you don't need all that buzz from the beginning, or maybe never. I mean, uh, there are people who have are not even promoting their work, but I, they have found an, a different channel to yeah. make um, the, this work for them as a way of uh, making a living. So it's not always one way. If you can find that different way, and I think that if you if you communicate honestly. And if you respect your audience and if you find a language to talk to them, then that audience will like to talk to you and you're going to be able to get that recognition, even if it's for, from less people, right. it's going to be enough because you know that those others don't necessarily need to like your work. It's okay. It's, I cannot yeah. present my work to uh, <clears throat> somebody <clears throat> sorry, who likes uh, color photography and expect them to like my work as much as they would like a color work or I mean this is a very simple sure. um, example but it's okay it's absolutely okay you don't need not you don't need to be the one person with the most followers yeah, I agree <laughs> and, and as someone who doesn't be cool about it <laughs> Just yeah and you know again <laughs> I don't have a massive social media following and I'm, in many ways I'm quite happy about it because I do have a very solid core of people who, who love my work yeah. and it's, it's, it's definitely, um, yeah, you can't please everybody. Uh, I've just thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. The time's just flown Me too. by. It was wonderful. <laughs> um, I, I hope once all this uh, pandemic finally uh, eases off that we'll we'll get to meet in person one day it would be it would be wonderful yeah. to yeah we have to do that soon as as soon as we can get out of the house <laughs> yeah that would be get out of the country get out of <laughs> well it, yeah. it, it, nothing would give me more pleasure than walking around the city with you and learning <laughs> yeah sure we we're going to do that first first opportunity it's thank going you to very be a much pleasure well thank, thank you very you. much for for inviting me it's, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you and talk about these things. So. And you, thank you very much for your, your time and, and your huge amount of inspiration over the years as well. <laughs>